Hello, and welcome back to Sprite Guard Plays Hyper Rogue. It has been a very long time, and a whole lot has changed. I have been doing a lot in the, uh, I think, couple of years since I did a YouTube video of this game. I have been studying the masters, I have been practicing this game, and now I am starting on, well, continuing an adventure. When I played this on YouTube a lot, I always said that Hyperstones was my main goal, but I never went for it very seriously. And recently, over on my live channel, I have been uh, streaming more aggressive attempts to get Hyperstones, and I've been doing a lot of routing. And so I thought that it would be a good time to start up a YouTube series that's a little bit more about that adventure. I feel like I have the kind of the structure that I felt like I was missing. And so I have uh, put us into first person view because this is one of the things that changed in the, uh, in the couple of years since I stopped doing this game regularly on YouTube. And it's also something that I think is really cool. This is the exact same game, but now it's in 3D, it's in first person, and we are going to grab some treasures here, and then we're going to start looking at what it is that we need to do in order to take on this big challenge. And over on the live channel on Twitch, I have been working on Classic 100%. Classic is the mode that we're in right now. It's the mode where everything plays um, the way that it, it did at the beginning, where you only have one hit point, you lose if you get checkmated, and orbs are temporary and fleeting. But... My real ambition, my, my big goal that I don't know if I'll ever be able to accomplish is I would like to get Orb Strategy Mode 100%, the total victory achievement. And that is going to be a much, much bigger task. Um, I'm already doing some attempts at Classic 100%, but I am not even prepared for a total victory achievement. And so that's my plan for this YouTube series is it's going to be a little bit more heavily edited than it was before. And it's going to be a little bit more staccato because I want to, instead of documenting a single playthrough of this game, I want to document my journey towards getting the total victory achievement. I'm going to be breaking this down into a few sub goals, and the first one is I want to unlock everything in pure tactics mode. This is going to give us a great way of tracking progress, seeing how far along we are in each different land. It's also a great way of looking at how we would clear each of these lands without using orbs too much, because orb usage is going to be a really big bottleneck. And we're actually going to do most of this in classic mode. And the reason for that is because my real goal is to put up all of these scores with no orbs at all. So you can see I'm using this orb of flash right now, I picked it up for safety. And we're going we're gonna to play through Classic, but we're not going to grind up orbs. We're not going to do orb shenanigans, um, especially when we're getting those 20 treasures. And we're actually going to head back into... Oh, this is the desert. This is not the Land of Eternal Motion. Well, we'll carry on. We don't need 20 treasures from any of these uh, starting lands. Let's... Take a look again, make sure that I know which ones we do and don't need. So, actually, uh, Land of Eternal Motion we do need. Icy Land, Living Cave, and Desert we do not need. 
All right. So in that case, let's head back into the Land of Eternal Motion. If that is, I actually remember. No, this is this is not a Great Wall. This is a Dune. So we're going to have to find our way to another exit somewhere. I don't know how long that'll take. Uh, this is a great wall. This is an icy land. We do not need anything more from the icy land. So we're going to continue on. So this is going to be a big grind. This is going to be a really big project. And we're probably going to be switching between modes. Um, I'm going to be using classic for the actual unlocking. And the main reason for that is because it's just faster. It's much faster to actually get to the lands that we need to get those 20 treasures from. And I'm probably going to be switching between viewpoints as well, because I love the first person view, but it is more difficult, it is slower. And so I'm probably going to be using it to give a sense of adventure to give a sense of place to these videos and look at that sandworm that is so much creepier in first person and so i'm going to you know i'm going to be doing this i'm especially going to be using this for edits because as i said this is going to be much more heavily edited and I think it looks better when you're doing a cut if it's between two first-person scenes rather than two top-down scenes. But we'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm figuring a lot of this out. I'm still planning things as we go. And we just need to get out of the desert at this point, which is always a tricky proposition. And so I'm going to be looking at the mini-map, and I think for escaping lands especially... It's going to be better to um, better to do things from the top-down view. It's a little easier to see what's around. So we're going to switch over. And there we are, just like that. So now we're just going to deal with some combat, and we are going to start moving really fast. I'm going to be using some speed tech. Hey, look, it is the Warped Coast. I don't know if we can get in there. This um, the sandworm really does not want us to get into the warp coast, but we can work our way around here. Okay, so this is one of the lands that we need 20 treasures from, and it is right here. It is convenient. Um, I have been doing some practice here because of the, the live practice. I've been trying to practice every land that I don't have a ton of experience with. And so I'm getting pretty confident with this one, and of course, every little bit of practice is going to help. Um, the main thing I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be paying attention to if I am on the same kind of tile as these Rattlings, or a different kind of tile. Because that is going to determine whether or not I can attack them. And then we'll be using the trees, chopping down trees, to fix our parody. I need to get a tree here. There we go. This one I can fight directly. This one I need to chop a tree. This one I need to chop another tree. There we go. So we actually need 20 treasures from here, not 10. I do have kind of a habit of stopping at 10. I just heard an acid gull, which makes me think, yes, there is open ocean over there. Um, if we can get to that open ocean, that would be lovely, but we do need our treasures first. This one we don't need anything to fight. So I'm going to get back in the boat that I had here because that's... Ah, we actually have access to this one right here. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's going to be a limitation of what we can do, is that um, not all of these boats are reachable. And so I have to pay attention to which boats I can actually get to, which exits I can actually get a boat and then get to. Uh, I did see one over here. 
We are now on the wrong tempo to get past this guy, so... There we go, that's that one. Um, this one we can fight, then that one, good. Let's see if I can find my way back to that exit. There it is. All right, so we do need 20 treasures from a couple of different places here. We can use that orb of flash a little bit effectively. We have an orb of shielding right here. That is very handy. Um, the whirlpool is actually something I have been practicing uh, live, and I've gotten a lot better at it. I have learned a lot of strategies for it. That said, I do want to be mindful of the time, and so I'm going to look around for an orb of safety, and we will take on the whirlpool in the next episode. So until then, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.